my channel. Today is Wednesday, July 17th, and I thought I would come back for a quick floss tube update. I've already tried to record this video once today, and I lost it when I hit accidentally hit back instead of post, like forward. So, I get to do this again. So, um, I'm pretty much going to be showing you the same lips that I showed you in my last floss tube, um, but with a little bit more progress. And there's one project that um, I pulled out for the whole month of July, and I will show you that and show you what I've done on that one. I have a little bit of haul. I wouldn't even consider it haul. I would just consider it stash positions, maybe. Um, but for the most part, um, there's some organizational stuff in there, too. So, um, not really that too much, like, fun stuff. Just just one fun stuff, and the rest is just like, meh, whatever. So, let's begin, shall we? Um, my last attempt at this video was, like... It was still about 40, 45 minutes because I rambled on entirely too much at the end about some stuff. And I'm hoping to not do that this time. So the first project that I'm going to show you, not necessarily the first project that I worked on, um, the first project that you will get to see today is the Watery Tart. And this is by, um, I believe, Crafter Dark on Etsy. She has lots of cute patterns. I love her stuff. Um, and I will go ahead and insert the video, well, not the video, I will insert the picture of where she was last time you saw her here. And so, I've gotten a little bit of progress done. It's all black. Really. So, this is where she is at today. As you can see, I have done more of all this over here. There's still a little bit more up here at the top that needs to be done. And then I can start moving down and doing the actual mermaid uh, body herself. Um, you see the hand, her hand coming up there. This little spot right here, that's actually in her forehead. So she, she started but I just got to finish her. So, there's that one. Um, and this is an 18 count Ada that I dyed myself. So, there's that one. Part of me wants to work some more on her, and part of me doesn't. So, I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. Um, next, oh, FYI, if you see anything flying around, I have a special guest today. Mr. Fly is in here with me, and he, he may or may not make an appearance. I don't know. So, the next thing I have to show is the Krabby All Year series that I've been working on. This is the current leaflet that I am in. Um, and the last time you saw this, I had all this done, really. And I had April and May's completed. And I had not yet started on the block of June. So, I hadn't done the, um, the border or anything. I finished up May's, and then that was it. <laughs> um, so... With that being said, you don't really need a picture of where it was, so I'm just going to show you where I'm at now. I tried to get this done. Um, I worked on it Sunday a little bit. I got the border done Sunday, and then I worked on it Monday and yesterday, Tuesday. And I was hoping to get it finished by the end of the day, but between traffic and everything else, the in and out store, I just I didn't have time. So, this is where it's at that now. Sorry for my perry needle minder. And I 
over here somewhere. Hold on. Grab oh, with the magnet. I knew it was down there somewhere. Okay. So now that Perry has moved out, I moved out of the way. This is the whole thing so far. And close up. Um, as you can see, I worked, I did the border and did that, did the caterpillar, did the ladybug body. Um, this caterpillar, why do I keep calling him a caterpillar? He's not a caterpillar, he's a, a, a centipede. Um, this centipede was actually charted in the same red that this ladybug body is in and that yellow right there. I did not like that color combination. I didn't like those colors. And also, too, we've had a number of centipedes get into the house here this past month or so. And so I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit to make it more noteworthy that we were having some caterpillar. Why do I keep saying caterpillar? that we were having some centipede, um, some things going on with the centipede. So I charted it in, not charted it, but I stitched it in this dark, um, like mahogany brown, and then the lighter brown. Um, this is like a reddish brown right here. Um, this brown, it is in the, somewhere in the pattern. It hasn't come up, it hasn't come up yet, um, but it will come up later in another leaflet. It will come up in another, um, another block somewhere. Um, but the lighter brown is actually the same brown that the rabbit and that uh, signpost is. So that's the same brown as that. And yeah, that's all I got done. This is the wings of the bee I had just started on that gray color. And then this is the the wings of the dragonfly that's right there. So. Um, and all these little stitches out by themselves, I kind I used a a tip by another floss tuber. I think it's just stitching. I think. Um, if not, I'll I'll post a channel up here. Um, but she was talking at one time about doing these stitches like this when they're out by themselves. By only using one strand and you may you may be doing two strands everywhere else but only using one strand and doing each leg twice so like you take the one strand you do the leg in the one strand and then you go and then you do it again in the strand and then you go over and do the, the, the top leg um, twice so basically you're doing it you're doing it with the two strands um, you're making it look like it's two strands, but it's only one strand. So that's how I did those. Um, so that hopefully you wouldn't be able to see my carrying them so badly that the thread. I'm going to show you all my back briefly. Let me get this up here. Yeah. Um, but hopefully they won't show, up, show as much um, with the, you know, it's only one strand being just thrown across there. This is a pretty thick linen. So I don't worry so much about my floss, about my, my strands carrying. Um, plus two, when I frame it, it's going to be on like a dark board. It's not, it's not like you're going to have light shining through it when you mount it in the frame. So, so far I liked it okay. So I just did the one strand. And I think it'll be okay. I don't. Th I don't think the strands are showing through as bad. I don't think the strands are showing through like they would um, if I had to use the two strands. So there's that. Um, the next one. Um, and that fabric. I always try to say the fabrics, but I always end up almost forgetting. That fabric is a 32 count um, Belfast linen in ale by Picture This Plus. It's a good dark neutral if you ever need a dark neutral. Um, 
Then next on the list is Winchester. This is by Fiddlesticks AU. And while I'm pulling this out, I will show you where this was the last time you saw it. But I haven't gotten very much done on it. Just to FYI. Um, this is where it sits at now. Um, I finished. I know I just had the top. Um, like, yeah, I know I just had like this half. Because everything's backwards to me right now. Um, I just had this half of the shield done. And then there was like a, a line and a half done right here. I finished off the other line of the shield. And did like another line of gray. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, that was a day's worth. So. And this is. Picture this plus. It's a 32 count. I know that much. It's picture this plus. Sterling. For some reason I keep wanting to call it Regency or Legacy or something like that. But it's not. It's Sterling. And it's kind of a. Um. A sagey green color, minty sagey green color. It's pretty. So, um, so there's that one. Just flying through these. And the next one, I'm not going to bother trying to show y'all a before and after because I can tell you exactly what I did on this one. So this one is the Spring House by Brooks Books. This is a free design that you can find on Craftsy along with the other three. Um, I think my, um, my goal is to do this one and the winter house on this blue fabric and then I'll probably do the summer and the fall on maybe a tannish fabric um might help I put it right side up so this is where it's at um the last time I showed you this in my last plus two video um so, well since since my last video I have completed um this window, the, that dark yellow right there in the window, that dark yellow, I think, and that one. And then I did these two um, window frames and then that, that um, beige in the tree right there. That's all I did. That's all I did. You know, it's not a lot. So. Um, I think I tend to avoid working on this just one just because it's on 14 count. And 14 counts really not my favorite. So I tend to try to work on anything else but stuff that's on 14 count. And I know I'm probably going to have to get over that because I have Princess Grace's ball gown on 14 count. But that one's really pretty though. Um, That's all my regular whips that you saw that I've worked on again since the last time you saw them in my last video. Um, I have one more whip that um, I've decided to pull out and try to focus as much as possible on it um, at home. Like it's my home project. And um, that is my Chester project. And if you've been watching my channel a while, you know that my, the Chester is it's, a, it's one that I, I keep wanting to say kitted up. It, I made a pattern out of it myself. And using a program that I had on my other laptop. Uh, it was a picture that I found online. Kind of a prim promotional picture. Um, uh, and I added some text to it. I added his name, um, birth year, and death year. And he died two years ago this month, um, July 20th to be exact. And as much as I would love to work on it, 
on the 20th until Saturday, I'm going to be at work all day. And I really wanted to be able to get, um, be able to work on it all day today, but I have been busy all day today. So, but I'm still going to continue working on it as much as possible this month. And I think I've gotten a good bit done. So let me show you, let me insert the, the actual picture that I used. This is not the edited picture that I used, but this is the picture that I used. Um, this is essentially what it's going to look like. Um, just without the text it's on that upper right hand corner that's in like the, the blank area um, but this is the actual picture of him that I'm using so let me insert that here and um, I'm trying to think if I can find one I will also insert a picture of where it was at the last time you saw this which I don't remember when that might be but I will insert a picture of when it where it was the last time you saw it so now I bet you want to see where it's at now since I've been working on it for the last two weeks this is where it sits at now isn't that so much I've gotten so much done on this but it's mostly because this is all like color block blocks of color so um I'm, I'm gonna try to hold it up real close so you can see it's not just black in there there's navy blue in there as well like around the edges right here like that's all navy blue and it goes up into here so but that's where it's at now um this is being done on the one over one on the 22 count harding or ada whichever way you want to call it so I'm happy I'm really happy with this um, I'm trying to both work on the color areas as a whole but also trying to keep it as much into these line these rows as possible so that I don't get like so that I'm not cross country <laughs> so I'm not just doing cross country that I'm, I'm trying to do it as much into lines as possible but um, so it's not a strict row by row by like 10 10 stitch rows that is kind of staggered a little bit and hopefully that helps against um, the lines the, the tension lines showing up which you get sometimes so that's where it's at now my goal um, before the end of the month is to obviously to finish this and to finish getting this line here so that I can start on this line and then I can just carry it down. So I think his head starts somewhere over here. So I'm, I'm still a little bit away from his head, but this is his ear. And I had made sure to jump over to that when I first started because I didn't want to just be doing all that background without seeing any kind of actual person so that's where it's at now yeah. I'm proud of myself though I think it's a lot even if it is blocks of color which go pretty fast so that's all the whips that I worked on um, at these last couple of weeks the only things I have to show I did manage to buy a haid and if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know I don't usually take part in the Hade sales. Because to me, it's like there's so many other things that I have that need to be done. And I know that with the Hades, that I'm not going to be um, starting those right away. I, don't get me wrong, I have Hades. I have all kind of Hade patterns. Um, most of them were freebies. Um, I have... I purchased a few of them when I first learned about Hade, and I still haven't started any of them. No, I take that back. I didn't start one, but even to this day, I'm still not happy with it. So it'll eventually get restarted. Um, but I did purchase one pattern when in the Hade sale a couple of weeks ago. Not the 50% off one, but she had another one not long after that. It was like 
30 or 40 percent off so I decided to go ahead and I said what the heck and I bought a pattern and since it's a digital pattern PDF I will have to insert the picture of what it is So that one is called Moths, and it is by Lee, I almost said Lee Bogle. It's Moths by Marta Dalig. Um, and that's been on my wish list for a very long time. And it's been one of my favorites ever since I first saw it. Because I'm more of a moth person instead of a butterfly person. So um, I really love that picture. And... I'm thinking I want to go ahead and start kitting it up so that possibly I can start it for New Year's. Possibly. Um, if I start anything, I'm only going to tar start two starts in 2020. No no starts this year um, because I'm starting to finish up some stuff. Um, but I do want to start that and my Chatelaine my hydrangea chatelaine that I purchased last year. Um, I would like to be able to start that next year sometime. Hopefully for my birthday. Um, but we'll see. Um, at least the, the kit from European Crossage is not as much for that one as it was for Taj Mahal. So there's that at least. Um, but that's all the like fun stuff. I did purchase, um, where'd it go? I have two purchases in one thing, so you have to excuse me. I just, I did buy 10 skeins of CXC 310 because I noticed I was getting low on the 310 of, because my, my watery tart, I'm actually using three CXC 310 for that one. And I noticed I was getting, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough for that or not. So I just went ahead and bought a listing, basically. Um, it's 10, 10 skeins of black. And what this is sitting in is the other thing that I purchased. And that is um, from eBay. I purchased um, like 500 of these little baggies. And these are 6 inches by 4 inches. I wanted to get a longer one because um, the thread skeins would fit better into it instead of having to fold them up. Um, my idea was that I wanted to, I wanted these to be longer to fit into the photo box better. <clears throat> Hold on, I need to get something to drink. Water down tea. So, like, I have a regular, regular photo box, right? Let me open this up. My original idea was that I wanted these to fit long ways. My original idea with this box was to use it for my diamond painting drills, but I was going to use it and put these long ways like that. But as you can see, there's still a lot of room. There's still some room on the side. I, I, I'm not quite. But if I put them sideways like this, I can't fit to, I don't have enough room right here to fit a second row sideways. However, if I use the regular 3x5 um, floss away bags, uh, Which I brought one in here. If I use the regular 3x5 floss weight bags, those can fit. Oops, what am I doing? What am I doing here? Okay. <laughs> those can fit to one right here. You see how it comes out there right there? And then I can fit another one over here. So I can fit two um, of the 3x5, two rows of the 3x5 in there. And, it, and these came with the divider, so 
um, so I can actually use up more space like that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those six by four ones that I purchased from eBay. Um, need to keep that up. That's the thirty-seven ninety-nine that I'm using for Chester. Um, I need to get some more of these too. I love this. I love this. I love this design. Um, but yeah, that, that's all the purchases. Um, the last thing I have to talk about is I have been trying to read more. Well, I love to be able to read more, but between stitching and work, I just don't have the time to actually get an actual book out and read it. So I've gone back to listening to Audible because I have 45 minute commutes twice a day. So that's an hour and a half in my car every day. So I figured that's some good time to be able to get in listening to a book. So the first thing I started listening to, which I had already actually downloaded it and the sequel. So I managed to start listening to and finish this one, it's Ashes to Ashes by Tammy Ho, and if you like crime fiction, which I do, um, especially if it has anything to do with forensics, forensics I like the, um, the Bones books too, the ones that are the same character as the show Bones um, by Kathy Rikes. I like those books too. Um, but Tammy Ho is another great author. Um, this one, it centers on a town in Minnesota and a body has been burned in the park and it is a third in a string of murders that they are realizing. Um, the first two being prostitutes and they're calling this guy the cremator and there's supposedly a witness that sees the guy burning the body but she's being very difficult in dealing with she's 15 she's she's a teenager she's 15 and she's being very difficult um like sometimes she's emotional but sometimes she's like angry and um so they are trying to solve this third murder and they believe this third person who's been killed to be the daughter of a prominent businessman um, and they say they believe it's her because it had no head and the body is obviously the skin has been burned away and stuff so um, them trying to figure out who would have killed this man's daughter without actually knowing that it's her so usually with some of these books I can not not this author though um, a lot, a lot sometimes with the crime books, I can read through them and kind of get a, a, a feel and kind of figure out who it is, you know, who the suspect is. With her books, no. They do a complete 180. You, you would not guess by any stretch of the imagination who the killer is. Um, and... This one has not just one twist, but there are several twists in this. So, if you're interested in crime fiction, um, definitely give this a read. I will warn you though, there is some coarse language um, and some disturbing imagery in adult situations. So, just be aware of that. But I loved this book. Once I started getting into the climax area of the book um i had to keep listening i was even listening to it at work and i i breezed through that thing <laughs> like a couple of days um actually within a day i don't know it was something like that but um i loved this one i would give it i give the book itself five stars i'm not crazy about the guy that's doing the reading that that's doing the that's doing the audible reading for it. There's so many characters in here. I think he has a hard time being able to, he, he tries his best, I give him that. 
he tries his best to vocally distinguish between each character. Um, and I am on to the next book. I've already started on the second book. There's the two main, the two main, um, crime detective people in this one, um, is the victim's advocate named Kate, and there's an FBI agent, um, like a criminal profiler that they've brought in from the FBI, um, named John Quinn. That's funny. That's my last name, too. Um, and there's also other detectives in this particular unit, um, by the names of Kovac and Liska. There's a female detective named Liska. They are actually the ones featured in the second book. Um, and the second book is... I, I'll get into more about that one, but it's a guy... It, the son of a former police captain is found hanging in his, in his home. And they're trying to figure out if it had anything to do with him being gay. Um or not, if it had anything to do with um, the case he was working on, which he works in internal affairs um, section of law enforcement. So he's not exactly the most, one of the most popular people because police hate internal affairs. So, um, so I've started on that book. I'm a few chapters in, um, nothing really too bad exciting has happened. So, um, nothing, nothing real big has happened. Um, so I, I don't want, I don't want to spoil it. So if you like crime fiction, go check this author out. You don't have to check this book out. You can check this author out. She is a great author. Um, she has, there was another series that I read from her before. Um, I think the I think it's Darkest Road. It was a it was a um, it was a three parter, and they took place in the '80s before all the forensic stuff. So everything had to be done by hand. Um, so, but these these ones I think this one came out in '99. I think. Hold on. Yeah, this one came out. This one came out in 1999. Um. And I think it takes place around that particular time because there was a scene in this book where um, Kate had received a fax. <coughs> Sorry. Too much talking today. The, um, but Kate had received a fax about her um, witness client and it was from an article that was dated in 1996 so so yeah it's not not too far distant in the past so but it was it was current with the time that it came out so um and i think the the, the sequel that i'm on now it takes place a year later from these events so that's gonna be it for me today guys um I'm trying to keep this shorter. I got way too um, into talking about that book, and and I was also I think at one point I was trying to explain my stitches in the uh, crabby all year, um, but. I signed back up for Earfleek like a while back, even before back before my last video. I just forgot to tell you about it. I signed back up for Earfleek, um, but you don't if you don't know about Earfleek, they are a subscription and for three fifty a month plus shipping, I think um, you get a pair of earrings delivered to your mailbox. And the first time I signed up for this back in twenty seventeen. It was kind of a mystery, and I mean it still is kind of, but it's they do it a little differently now. 
Um, the first time I signed up in 2017, um, I was signed up for him for I think four months, three or four months. And in that time I had gotten two separate pairs of earrings with the Eiffel Tower. Now I'm not a huge fan of Paris stuff. I don't, I don't go out of my way to look for Eiffel Tower stuff. But that's not really something that I would wear. Um, and I think I've worn one of them one time. And it was the one that was a little bit more dangly. Um, but I just, I didn't really care for what I was getting sent. So I unsubscribed. And plus I was moving. I was going to end up moving too. So, um, hold on. Come in here, you're not helpless. My cat's mad that I shut him out. Come here. You wanna say hi to the people? He's pitiful. <laughs> He's gonna slink off. Hi. But um I signed back up for Ear Fleek. Um because I got an offer, um, special offer to come back, and I did, and they have the thing now where you can kind of go through their inventory and on the site, and you can either left swipe or right swipe, and, um, the stuff that you like and don't like, and then that way, um, you can only get the ones that you like, and they won't send you the ones that you don't like, so, um, and I also, a week or two ago, I think, I signed up for Ipsy, um, which is for $10 a month, you get different beauty products. So I'm going to try that and see if I find anything that I like. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like to see my Ipsy unboxings, because they're kind of personalized, because um, like you can go through and say, not only what your skin is like and what your eye color is, what your hair color is, um, what your hair texture is, um, what your skin texture is. Um, you can customize it by, like I don't use many, I don't really use moisturizers and um, primers and all that stuff. So I, I put that I wanted to receive those things rarely instead of um, normal or often. Um, they send you perfumes, they send you moisturizers, which I don't really use moisturizers and stuff. Um, but different things. They send all kinds of things. Um, so let me know if you want me to show you my uh, Ipsy unboxings or unbaggings. Um, and then I will I will try to get around to doing that. Um, I don't know when I'm supposed to get my first one. Um, supposedly when I first signed up it was, I had gotten put on a wait list. But if I shared it to Facebook, um, then I got moved to the front of the line. So I don't know when I'll get my first one. I've been charged for it, but I don't know when I'm, it's actually going to arrive. So, um, I think, what else? That's really the only subscription that I'm signed up for. Um, supposedly, Leslie at Under the Sea Fabrics is supposed to reopen her monthly subscriptions um, next month in August and I am going to see about getting back into that because I love her stuff. I love her fabrics. Um, as you can tell if you've watched my channel, the two main fabric dyers that I use are Under the Sea Fabrics and Pictureless Plus. That's really the only, probably 99% of the stuff I use if I don't use my own stuff. Um, so. I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else. I'm still diamond paying a little bit from here, um, here and there. I have a very large project that I'm trying to get done. And I just realized that although I checked it in, I remember checking it in when I went to pull the container that I had kitted it up with. There's none in the container. So I'm missing two bags of diamonds. And I don't, I don't know what happened to them. I'm probably going to have to order them. So, that'll be fun. 
so anyway I guess that's gonna be it for me today guys um, I'm gonna pull some different stuff to work on these next couple of weeks um, because I'm getting a little bit burned out on the stuff that I've been working on at work so I'm going to spin the old magic wheel um, and pull a couple of different whips and see what it comes up with and I guess you guys will see those next week you'll definitely see next ne not necessarily next week you guys you guys will see those in my next video but and you'll probably see Chester again too because I want to keep working on him throughout July um but yeah that's it for me I hope you guys have a great day have a great week get lots of stitching just be sure to be awesome to yourself and be awesome to each other. Bye.